Greetings in that strong and blessed name of Jesus. Welcome to Fully Alive. Fully Alive is an outreach ministry of the Church of God of Cleveland, located at 11100 Union Avenue, right on the corner of MLK and Union. Praise our God. Amen. Well, we do thank God for his goodness. Amen. Uh, today, by the grace of God, uh, we're looking at uh, chapter 5 of the Gospel of Luke. And hopefully, we're going to complete chapter 5 today. Okay. Um, as we've been studying chapter 5 of Luke, verses 1 through 16, Jesus called his first disciples. He also cleansed the leper. Uh, there was a miraculous catch, catch of fish. Uh, there was the calling of Peter, James, and John to, to ministry. And then there was that awesome healing of that leper. If thou will, thou can make me clean. Jesus reached forth his hand and touched them. And he said, I will be thou clean. Amen. And verses 17 through 26, uh, the healing of the paralytic. Amen. And uh, four dedicated friends determined to get their friend to Jesus. Amen. And we uh, shared many thoughts there. Amen. Uh, those uh, sermons are available uh, on YouTube. Praise God. Or you can uh, look at KZ. KZ uh, TV and radio. All right. Praise our God. Anyhow, um, so uh, Jesus forgives this man of his sin when he saw their faith and uh, stirs up the Pharisees and the publicans while they were really upset. Who can forgive sins but, but God? And of course, uh, the Bible says the power of God was there to heal them all, but and those guys were not there to be healed or to hear the word. They were there to uh, criticize. Anyway, uh, Jesus asked the question, which is easier to say, thy sins be forgiven, or take up your bed and walk. And so he says to the man who was sick, take up your bed and walk. You know, praise God. And he got up and went to his house and everybody was, oh, we've never seen it on this wise before. Well, praise God. Uh, so today, we're at Luke chapter 5, verse 27. We're going to go through 27 to 39, Lord willing. And here, uh, Jesus calls uh, his fourth disciple. He calls Levi or Matthew. Amen. Levi or Matthew. <coughs> Excuse me. Amen. And, uh, well, praise our God. And so... Pray for us as we proceed. Father, we ask your blessings on this message. Ask your blessing on our lives. Bless those in the viewing and listening audience to receive. In Jesus' strong name we pray. Amen. Well, praise God. Uh, after these things, he went forth and saw a publican named Levi sitting at the receipt of custom. And he said unto him, follow me. Now, a publican was a tax collector, despised by the scribes and the Pharisees, not looked on favorably by most people. Now, you remember the story about Zacchaeus, you know, he was uh, a publican himself, and Jesus stopped under the sycamore tree and looked up and Zacchaeus, being short of stature, had climbed up in that tree so he could get a, a view of Jesus. Jesus stopped, looked up, and said, uh, Come down, Zacchaeus. Today I will uh, be at your house. And at any point, uh, Zacchaeus uh, repented, said, If I have, you know, stolen any money from folks, I'm going to pay them so many times over. And, well, he knew he had. He was, if he followed the trend of most publicans. Well, you know, they were not considered very honest, made themselves rich by overtaxing
people. And yet, and yet Jesus called him to be one of his disciples. And Jesus saw something uh, in Matthew. And he sees something that he can work with in you and in me. Praise our God. Now, it's a little different, but you know, uh, I thought about the song uh, that Andre Crouch sung, uh, helped make it popular. It was written by Dottie Rambo. He looked beyond my sin and saw my need. Yeah, it says, amazing grace shall always be my song of praise. For it was grace that brought my liberty. I do not know just why he came to love me so, but he looked beyond my fault and saw my need. I shall forever lift mine eyes to Calvary to view the cross where Jesus died for me. How marvelous the grace that caught my fallen soul. He looked beyond my fault and saw my need. Praise God. Jesus saw something in Matthew and called him. Praise God. Listen, in Luke chapter 5, verse 28, and he left all, rose up, Followed him. Now that's an amazing word there. Jesus says, follow me. Uh, this man, a public figure, was busy about what he was doing. And when Jesus says, follow me, he left all. Rose up. Followed Jesus. Amazing. Clearly, the Holy Spirit had prepared his heart. I believe he knew it was God speaking. And he knew what he was saying. No, he did not have the whole picture. But he moved out by faith. God may not show you the whole picture, but he will show you what is the next reasonable step of faith to take. The next reasonable step of faith to take. And then you move out by faith, and when you obey that, he will show you the next reasonable step of faith. Almighty God, I praise you and I magnify you, almighty God, that you show us the next reasonable step of faith. Praise our God. Luke 5, 29. Luke 5, 29. And Levi made him a great feast in his own house. And there was a, 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 a great company of publicans and of others that sat down with him, making wonder how big that house was, what kind of house did the brother have? <laughs> Hallelujah, he was able to put on a great feast, amen. And it was a great number of publicans that showed up. Well, praise God, amen. You see, Levi or, or, or Matthew, provided Jesus a great opportunity for evangelism among his unconverted friends. Now, the Pharisees couldn't see it. Uh, they didn't have a heart for evangelism. They were about religion, uh, uh, whatever it took to make them look good. But they were not about the heart of God. And we need to be careful because we can get in that same mood in religion, okay? Uh, you know, when we first got saved, uh, we were bringing all our unconverted friends, you know, uh, but after a while, you, you know, we separated from those unconverted friends and we began to hang with the believers and, you know, uh, we need to rethink some things. Well, praise our God. Listen, listen, but the scribes and the Pharisees, you know, could not see it. Uh, they were criticizing Jesus for fellowshipping with sinners. Oh yeah. They're fellowshipping with sinners. Well, listen, listen, listen. <laughs> Amen. Well, I said, but this, the Bible says, but the scribes and the Pharisees murmured against the disciples, said, why do you eat and drink with publicans and sinners? Well, if you only hung with saints, it's no wonder your church is not growing. And Jesus answered them and said in verse 31, they that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And we need to keep that 
in mind, the church certainly has a twofold mission. The church certainly are to feed the saints, to root them and ground them and equip them to do the work of ministries. And so uh, they need the fellowship with, with some sinners. We, we, we got to reach sinners. We got to build bridges with those who are lost. Well, Jesus says he came to call sinners to repentance. All right. Well, praise God. Uh, we must get with the lost uh, to meet them and to invite them uh, to dinner, uh, etc. You, you and I have to fellowship with sinners to reach them. You don't have to compromise your standards, your principles, or your conviction. But fellowship them you must. Matthew's old friends may have never gone to the synagogue. However, they would come to dinner at Matthew's place. What about your place? What about your place? Amen. Well, praise our God. Yes, yes. You need to invite them to your place for dinner. For fellowship. And then invite the pastor over. Or someone else with the gift of evangelism. Amen. <laughs> yeah, praise our God. Invite them over. Or, in fact, invite someone else over. Who has the gift of evangelism. And they won't... They'll share the word with them. Praise God. They will build bridges. They will exercise wisdom. And, and they might not be able to share the plan of salvation in its entirety there. But they'll build bridges of friendship that would allow them at another time to share the plan of salvation. Well, thank God for his goodness. Praise God. And then, and then amen. Uh, and the scripture goes on in verse 33, because uh, a, a, a question uh, about fasting, you know, and, and I don't know that it took place during this breakfast, uh, uh, dinner, a uh, fellowship, but uh, but nevertheless, the uh, Luke uh, began to uh, draw our attention and focus us uh, to the fact that there was a question about fasting. Amen. Now, I'm going to branch out a little bit, talk to you a little about fasting, but listen. Uh, Luke uh, 5, 33. And they said unto him, Why do the disciples of John fast often and make prayers? And likewise the disciples of the Pharisees. But thine eat and drink. And he said unto them, Can you make the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? But days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast in those days. Well, praise God. Amen. Fasting, let me just say, we'll go back to that scripture shortly. But, uh, but fasting is abstaining from food for a period of time or for a season of time, okay? Uh, people fast for several different reasons. Fasting is practiced by all religious faith, as far as I know, for spiritual reasons. I believe and it's practiced by non-religious groups also for health reasons, uh, discipline, okay? But when it comes down to the body of Christ, amen, the purpose of fasting is to help us consecrate, amen. Um, yeah, to help us consecrate before God, uh, humble ourselves, uh, to better hear what the Spirit is saying. Uh, to better receive from God. Amen. Listen, be very clear. 
that fasting helps us, not God. Be very clear that fasting does not help God to move. It helps you to position yourself so that you can hear and receive from God. God is always ready. Amen. He's always ready to help. He's always ready to move. Amen. <laughs> the Bible says he does not change. Okay. There's no variableness of shadow or changing or turning with God. God is ready and he's always ready. Almighty God, I thank you again. Amen. <laughs> As I speak, amen, the word is a two-edged sword. It cuts in my heart. Thank you, Father, that you are always ready. Thank you for your faithfulness. Praise our God. Be clear. Fasting helps us. God's need no, God needs no help. Amen. God is always ready to meet us at the place of our need. Scripture declares his will or his word is settled in heaven. Amen. Psalms 119, 89. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Praise our God. Thank you, almighty God. Now, in Matthew chapter 6, you can take the time to read it when you can. Uh, there are three things that Jesus expects from all of us. There are three things that he expects all of us to do. And somebody said, what are they? Well, in chapter 6, verse 2, he expects us to give. He says, when you give. And in verse 7, he expects us to pray. He says, when you pray. And in chapter 6, verse 16, he expects us to fast. When you fast. Amen. Praise our God. Let God get a hold to you on that. Let that sink deep into your spirit. God expects you to give, he expects you to pray, and he expects you to fast. Well, praise our God. What a mighty God we serve. Now, there are three types of fasting, okay? that I want to focus on, and just briefly, the normal fast, the normal fast, abstaining from food from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., a normal fast. Uh, generally, uh, you're drinking something, but you're abstaining from solid food from 6 a.m., to 6 p.m., amen, uh, for the Jews, uh, 6 a.m. to 3 p.m., because uh, they tend to break their fast uh, around about the evening sacrifice, which was about 3 p.m., and nevertheless, a normal fast, abstaining from food from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., then there is the absolute fast, the absolute fast, totally abstaining from both food and drink, okay, and generally, no more than three days because, uh, you know, no more than three days because you can hurt yourself. Uh, you can endanger one's health uh, trying to go without food or drink and drink for more than three days. Now, obviously, the body can probably go 10 days. I don't know, you know, before you die with, without food or drink. But hey, but, I, you know, I'm, I'm no expert, okay? Well, praise our God. Now, Moses... Elijah and Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, supernaturally. It was a supernatural fast empowered by the power of God. So don't you try that, okay? Amen. Moses, Elijah, and Jesus fast 40 days and 40 nights, amen, supernaturally. Now, the implication is that they totally abstain from both food and drink during that time. It speaks very clearly that Moses did, okay? Well, praise our God. Amen. Well, and we thank God for his... Then there's the, uh, the third type of fast is the partial fast. And the partial fast is abstaining from uh, one meal or eating bread, you know, uh, 
and water um, only. You know, maybe you just do a bread and water fast. That's a partial fast. Uh, maybe you're just going to fast for breakfast and, and, and take that time in, in prayer and meditation. Now, I, I, I don't know how you decide to do, uh, but it's a, a partial fast uh, abstaining from uh, food or, or water or whatever. Uh, some people might abstain from sweets. Uh, somebody might abstain from, you know, I don't know, looking at TV for 30 days. I, I, you know, hey, uh, but the third type of fast would be, praise our God, a partial fast. Amen? Well, praise our God. All right. Um, Luke 5.33. And they said unto him, why do the disciples of John fast oft and make prayers? And likewise, the disciples of the Pharisees, but thine eat and drink. Okay. And he said unto them, can you make the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? Uh, you know, the idea there is, uh, can you make them uh, uh, do without uh, the bridegroom's presence? No. Okay. Uh, but the days will come, he says, when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, then they shall fast in those days. So in the bridegroom's presence, uh, it's a happy time. Amen. Uh, but time was going to come uh, when he's not there. And then obviously the fact that he's not there, they automatically are fasting. Okay. They're separated from him. Okay. Uh, they they abstain from his presence. Uh, uh, they won't be happy about it. Uh, they can mourn and afflict their, their soul uh, in that sense, since uh, he's not with them. Amen? Well, Jesus is a bridegroom, praise God, uh, who would soon be taken away uh, from those disciples. And then, of course, they would fast in the sense that he would be not there. But they would also fast, literally, uh, as the Holy Spirit direct them for those purposes that I told you, for a consecration. Uh, amen. To to put themselves in a the position to hear more clearly from God. Amen. And on and on and on. Listen, listen, listen. Amen. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, listen. Uh, we'll, we'll keep reading. Uh, verse 36. And he spake also a parable unto them. No man putteth a piece of a new garment upon an old. If otherwise, then both the new maketh a rent and the piece that was taken out of the new agreeeth not with the old. And no man putteth new wine into old bottles, else the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled, and the bottles shall perish. But new wine must be put in new bottles, and both are preserved. No man also having drunk old wine straightway desireth new, for he saith the old is better. So, uh, 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 after explaining uh, that, you know, um, being in the bridegroom's presence is something joyous and pleasant. And uh, But the time will come, you know, when the bridegroom was taken away and then they were fast. Jesus then proceeded to explain what he meant. Amen. See, the, the bridegroom uh, is with his disciples. And indeed, this is a time of rejoicing and not mourning. But he goes on to explain that this is a new time, a new era. He's bringing in a new dispensation. Amen. While John and his disciples fasted often, uh, probably twice a week, Jesus' disciples did not because he himself was their joy. Furthermore, the fulfillment of John's disciples that they really sought, uh, the fulfillment that they sought through fasting and praying, amen, uh, well, that desire is indeed fulfilled in Jesus Christ himself. Now, I can get... And they were concerned that John the Baptist was was uh, in prison, and of course, and and they wanted to see him out, and and that certainly was a good reason for them to fast and pray. But what I'm saying is, even beyond that, uh, Jesus Himself is the fulfillment of all they desire. Now, what the Pharisees should have been seeking for in fasting is also found in Jesus, although. Uh, <laughs> It was above the head, and I don't know 
that they were fasting and praying for the right purpose because a lot of times the Pharisees were fasting, pray to be seen of men, okay? Had not to get the heart of God. But but those who fasted uh, from an honest heart seeking the face of God, well then I submit to you that Jesus Christ was still the fulfillment of all they desired. But it was above their head at that time. And so, of course, uh, uh, they were not grasping what Jesus was saying. Jesus is bringing them into the new wine, which is requiring uh, new wine skins and new thought. Well, uh, just reading it from the uh, notes from Albert Barnes on that subject. Let's see if I, I still have time. Yeah. Amen. Praise our God. And so, um, Albert Barnes says, uh, from the thought of having drunk old wine, uh, wine increases its strength and flavor and its mildness and mellowness by age. And its mildness and mellowness, amen, as I, as I said, by age and, and is therefore preferable. They who have tasted such mild and mellow wine would not readily drink comparatively the sour and, and astringent juice of the grape as it came from the press. The meaning of this proverb in this place seems to be this. You Pharisees wish to draw my disciples to the austere and rigid duties of the ceremony of the law to fasten and painful rites, but they have come under a milder system. They have tasted the gentle and tender blessings of the gospel. They have no relish for your stern and harsh requirements. To insist now on them observing them would be like telling a man who had tasted of the good, ripe, and mild wine to partake of that which is sour and unpalatable. At the proper time, all sterner duties of religions will, will be properly regarded. But at present, to teach them to fast when they see no occasion for it, when they are full of joy at the presence of their master will be like putting a piece of new cloth on an old garment or new wine into an old bottle or drinking unpleasant wine after one had tasted that which is more pleasant. It would be ill time, inappropriate and incongruous. And that was Albert Barn notes on the Bible. Well, praise our God. Amen. Now, I want to caution you right here because some people are just hearing that uh, they only want to hear what they want to hear. And they're trying to pull an excuse why they shouldn't fast. And so a lot of believers have never fast, don't want to fast. But if you study history, not only were great men and women of, of the Bible fasting and praying, but great men and women of history fast and praying. Okay. So fasting is still in order Today, in Acts 13, 2 and 3, it says, As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost says, Separate me, Barnabas, and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. Praise God. Amen. And uh, that was the beginning of uh, Paul's missionary journey. Okay? Uh, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas, and Saul. Listen, listen. And so Barnabas and Saul were sent away with the blessing. After fasting and praying, amen, uh, consecrating, uh, putting himself in a position to hear from God. Well, praise our God. Listen, I just want to tell you that uh, uh, next week, look, we're done with chapter five, but next week I'm going to uh, um, encourage you uh, with a sermon of uh, let God arise and let his enemies be scattered because uh, there's a need for encouragement. And then we'll pick up on chapter six of Luke after that. All right. Well, praise our God. All right. And I want you to remember that this is a listener supported ministry and you can sow a seed through Givenly Five. Well, the Lord bless you. The Lord smile on you. The Lord shed his countenance upon you and give you peace in the name of Jesus. Amen.